Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and we are playing more games from the IGF On Live Indie Showcase 2012. This time around, it is Dust Force, and unfortunately, I haven't really been able to get a good impression of Dust Force by playing it using On Live, but I'd like to share the thoughts on the game that I have been able to uh, ascertain by playing in the latency ridden environment, which is On Live. And I, I don't mean that as an insult to On Live, the latency is a part of the system, it's how it works. Unfortunately, Dust Force is a precision platformer in which you play a cleaner who is attempting to clean up various things across various worlds, and ultimately it is a score challenge game where you're trying to get the fastest score and the highest completion percentage of dirt cleaned up. The online service's latency makes it very difficult to pull off those precise maneuvers, though not impossible. You will see footage in this video of me getting a perfect score on the first level. Most of you have probably seen the first level, Everybody's played it, all the big names, Giant Bomb and their quick look, Total Biscuit in his WTF is. So you've seen that level, you know that level. I did double S rank on that level, and I was satisfied with the performance I was able to get. But as the levels got more complex, my ability to control the character uh, it really, really got muddy. I wasn't able to make the, the very precise moves that I needed to make, and that's kind of expected with On Live. So, uh, On Live does fail in this area in terms of precision platformers. I don't think that uh, a Super Meat Boy or Dust Force is something that On Live can deliver. Uh, I wouldn't purchase Dust Force on On Live, and uh, I probably would not play it. I wouldn't rent it. Uh, the trial definitely convinced me that the system just can't support it. All in all, the game looked very promising. It definitely looked like something I would be interested in because I do like those sort of challenging, score-driven platformers that are coming back into vogue here lately. So uh, I would like to give it a chance, perhaps the uh, local Steam version, and uh, report fully on it. But at this point, all I can really say about the game is that it has a lovely graphic style, almost cell shaded I really like it. I like the concept behind it. I like all the little things they do. For instance, the ability to watch back the performances of better players so you can see the, the line you should be taking and the little tricks that they do in order to pump their score up. Just because you can see that, though, doesn't mean you can actually pull it off because some of the guys who are playing this game, I don't know how many thumbs they have or how many hands they're using to play, but they pull off things that my mind can't even comprehend. So there's definitely a lot of potential here if you are the sort of gamer who likes to push for the highest score, be the best of the best, and all that good business. So that's pretty much all I actually have on the game from my experiences playing it through on live because it was practically unplayable. But uh, let's, let's uh, pad the video with a little bit of information, shall we? The guys who made the game, Hitbox Team, they're a gaming studio out of Australia, and it seems like Australia is really becoming a hotbed for gaming lately. I've seen several games coming from that area, as well as, well, of course, the game that we played earlier this week, Once Upon a Space Time, which was created by students from the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology. So Australia really putting themselves on the map as a gaming industry destination lately. Now, in terms of the IGF, Dust Force was given an honorable mention in the visual excellence category. And I can definitely agree with that. I think the flat shaded graphics were superb. Really, really good look, something that many indie developers definitely forget to invest time and money into. This game is clearly inspired to a certain degree by the success of Super Meat Boy, and they indeed took the same path as Team Meat by making sure that art was a high priority. I regret that I don't have more on this game for you guys, but unfortunately the on live service and the nature of this game just meant that I could not get good precise control and do the things that I needed to do to really play the game and get a full experience. I do hope to buy the game one of these days when I find it on sale, but if you have experience with the game, tell me in the comments below. Do you like it? Do you enjoy it? Should I just go ahead and purchase it? Is it that good? Let me know. Alright guys, I have been Big Dave, and until next time, Take it easy.